Hey, welcome back to Mesh Sheets. Maybe you guys are already using this Mesh Wi-Fi for a while. This is just a few tips that's going to be very useful when you want to use this Google Wi-Fi at your home. For a first time user, all these features are applicable for Google Wi-Fi or Nest Wi-Fi. It doesn't matter what model you are using, you will get the same features both for Google Wi-Fi and Nest Wi-Fi users. With Google Wi-Fi, you can always check the net speed right from that Google Home app. So let us see how to do that. Open your Google Home app and from the home screen itself, you can see the current speed is around 223 Mbps now and 15.4 upload speed. And also you can run a speed test if you want. Let me tap on the network, run speed test and it will test your internet speed. You can test both upload and download speed right from the app. Now it's popping up around 223 Mbps download speed and 12 Mbps upload. If you want to check with this one with the actual internet speed, let me go to fast.com and let us see how it's gonna show up. So it's just playing around 200 Mbps download speed. There is a slight difference between the actual numbers. In Google Wi-Fi or Nest Wi-Fi, you can check the mesh speed. That means you have an additional points that you deployed around your home and you can check the speed of those points. You can make sure that those points have a good connection with your primary router and delivering enough speed for the devices that connected to those points. If you are watching Netflix or Amazon Fire TV and you think your device is not performing well, you can test the internet speed for those individual devices independently right from this Google Home app. And that's a very interesting feature. Let us see how to do that. Go to devices. You will get a list of all the devices connected to your mesh Wi-Fi. Go for the particular device that you wanna test. For example, let me go for Amazon device that I have. For that device, go to info. And on the info, you can get all the information about that device that I like it. You can get the IP address that's connected and the MAC address of that device and whether it's connected to 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz connection and also the point name that's connected to that device. To check the device speed, tap on it and the app will do a quick speed test and finally you will get a result. So the last device speed that connected to that device was around 221 Mbps on November 60. You can use this feature to make sure that all your streaming devices or high paid demanding devices are connected properly to the Wi-Fi network. If you want to see what was your internet speed on previous days, you can always check that. Go to the Google Home app and tap on internet, scroll down until you see previous speed test. You can get at least seven days internet speed history and here it comes around 220 Mbps average. You will get an approximate idea how much is your network usage and also you can see each individual devices how much they consume per day go to wi-fi and tap on internet you can get a real-time usage of the network from this graph and also you can see a peak usage here and the peak it comes around 12 mbps for the last one day and i can change that one day to 30 days to get an average peak usage and it comes around 100 mbps instead of peak usage you can check the total usage of your network i can see for the one day it's taking around 19 gb and for the last 30 days it comes around 671 gb it's not yet that one terabyte but still it's a good usage just in case if you you suspect any of your device is consuming a lot of net you can check that you can check the individual device data usage right from this google home app so go to devices and select the device that you want to particularly check so let me go and check my google home speaker and if you tap on that device you can see the individual device usage the green one for the download usage and the purple one for the upload and also you can see 30 days and you can get an average use of individual device on your Wi-Fi network. And this one comes around 569 MB for 30 days usage. 
I like this Google Wi-Fi features since this providing a very micro level device control. That means you can control individual devices that connected to your network. So if you have a kids and you are allowed to use the internet during the day time, you can set that time to allow the internet connection to them. And if you want to shut off after 10 p.m. or 9 p.m., you can automatically schedule that. So first of all, if you want to pause any device, you can immediately pause the network connection to that particular device. So go to your Wi-Fi app and tap on the devices here. I can pause the network connection to any device indefinitely. For example, I can see the first one here, KV room. And if I tap on pause here, network connection to that particular device would be blocked until I unpause. So I can come back and unpause here. So in this way, you can control in very micro level and block internet connection to any devices that connected to your network. In addition to that, the same way if you are watching a Netflix or if you are watching a movie on Amazon Prime, you can prioritize internet connection to that particular device. Go to this devices tab here and prioritize device and select the device that you want to prioritize. And you can select the duration to prioritize this device. And you can end that whenever you want by simply tap on this end now button. You can combine together a couple of devices into a group. For example, one of your kids has a school laptop, phone, and other tablet devices. You can combine together and control their devices as a group whenever you want. Open your Google Home app for Wi-Fi and scroll down until you see family Wi-Fi. And under family Wi-Fi, you can see the groups where you can define a new group or if you have an existing group, you can give a name for that group and add the devices that you want to block at the same time and save it. And I can pause or unpause those devices manually at any time or I can set a schedule. So for the KV devices, I can set a schedule and you can select the days you want and you can automatically schedule to block internet on the days and the time that you set on this group of devices. Similarly, you can create a multiple group for multiple devices. So I have a couple of schedules that I already set here and I can control these devices based on these schedules automatically. Thank you for watching this video and if you like this video, don't forget to click on the subscribe button below and press the bell icon for latest updates. Let us continue. The only feature that I see it's lacking on this Google Wi-Fi features to block individual website. There is no built-in feature to block the individual website on Google Wi-Fi. However, there is a workaround to block any individual website using this Google Wi-Fi. For that, I'm using a free service called OpenDNS and let us see how to do that. So before we go further, change your Google Wi-Fi DNS IP address to this OpenDNS IP address. Tap on the settings button and scroll down for advanced networking and tap on this DNS, select custom, set the primary server as 208.67.222.222 and the second one 220.220. Make sure you set this primary server and secondary server with this IP address on the Google Wi-Fi network and you can save and exit from the app. Now open your computer and go to opendns.com and you can create an account if you don't have an account there. When you log in, you can see a couple of tabs here. On the settings, you can add a network over there. The OpenDNS will automatically detect your IP address or you can manually type the IP address and tap on this add this network. Your home network will add there. And if you have a dynamic IP address, tap on the advanced settings where you can click on this button for enabling the dynamic IP address. In the settings, you can get all web content filtering. That's I like so much here. You can select what kind of a restriction that you want to apply over there. Whatever the category of the websites that you want to avoid from your home network or you can select the block level. You can set low, moderate or high. Once you add your home network to here and you already added a DNS settings on your Google Wi-Fi all your traffic will route to this open DNS and they will filter out the website that you want to block. 
And in addition to that, if you want to block any particular website, you can go to the setting, web content filtering. In the very bottom, you can see always block and you can add any websites that you want to block. Add domain and add all network. And if I go to this particular website, that will be blocked from my network. And you can see the site is blocked due to content filtering. So it's an absolutely free service that you can integrate with your Google Wi-Fi network and use to filter any website or block any individual websites accessing from your home network. And what about if somebody tried to get access to your network, to your mesh Wi-Fi system? You can turn on the notifications for that. So if you see any unusual devices on your network, you can easily recognize them and immediately post those devices from using your network. Go to your Wi-Fi app, tap on the settings button. And if you scroll down, you can see a notifications where you can turn on the notification for any new device that's gonna join into your network or any new device that's joined to your guest network. And in addition to that, if there is a password misfit, and also you will get a notification for any lost connection. So I turned on all these notifications to monitor my network. And there are a couple of advanced settings that can be useful while you use your Google Wi-Fi. So let us check those. Open your Google Home app and go to Wi-Fi settings and tap on this settings button to get a primary network information and scroll down and where you can see advanced network settings. Here you can set a custom DNS over there. And similarly, you can check the WAN status here. You can set the DHCP static, the latest IPv6 standard for your Wi-Fi network. And you can set DHCP IP reservation if you have any particular device that that you want to give a static IP address instead of a dynamic one. If you want to do a factory reset, you can do that factory reset right from the screen. When you have a guest at your home, you don't need to give your primary Wi-Fi password. You can easily create a guest network for your Google Wi-Fi network. Go to Google Home and tap on Wi-Fi. And if you scroll down, you can create a guest network right from there. And also if you have any Google Assistant display, you can enable to display the password so the guest can easily get the password right from your Google Assistant displays. It won't interrupt your primary network and all the devices connected to your primary network will be secured. When you set up additional Wi-Fi points at your home, you can have a couple of options for each Wi-Fi points. To get that, go to Wi-Fi devices and you can see the primary router name. The Google Home app will do a quick test for all your mesh network and make sure those have a good connectivity. If you see a bad connectivity for any one of those devices, Google recommend to move around until you get a good connectivity with other mesh Wi-Fi networks. There are additional settings that you can individually use for a Wi-Fi point. Let me open one of the Google Wi-Fi point here. Tap on this settings button here. You can see the device name and you can change it if you want to move around this device into a particular room to identify easily. And the model number, software version, and the status light brightness. The Nest Wi-Fi has a Google Assistant speaker. You do have additional controls for the speaker and the light. Just to go to Nest Wi-Fi and you can already see this one is comes with a Google Assistant speaker and you can see a tiny icon next to the settings. Tap on the settings here where you can reverse your control if you are mounting the device vertically and also you can have equalizer controller and in addition to that you can adjust the speaker volume for the alarm and timer. There is a usual control for the light. You can adjust the intensity of the light on this Nest Wi-Fi too. I hope you enjoyed this video and now you know there are a lot of additional features that you can use with your Google Wi-Fi network. And I hope you like the additional feature to block or filter any contents to your home network. That's going to be an interesting feature for Google Wi-Fi users or any other mesh Wi-Fi users. Those can implement that feature by simply changing their DNS. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on the subscribe button here 
and press the bell icon for latest updates. We will come back with another video soon.